Okay, let's jump right in. The reason we have these two copper cells as part of the four horsemen system is they process all of the waste out of the silver cells. So the way that it works is I'll take uh, like three strands of 12 gauge wire and I'll twist them together. Um, here's a piece where I only ran for just a little bit. So this is basically how I just twist a bunch of 12 gauge wire together. Um, I'll coil it up on the bottom of the five liter beaker and I leave the strand run up and out of the beaker and connect that to my negative for my, my cathode. Um, I do cover the area that's exposed to air or the liquid meets the air. Um, I've covered that with a silicone tube. Um, that is an area kind of will oxidize and you, you know you can break the connection there. So having that silicone tube on there helps prevent against that. Um, and then in your aspirator bottle, you'll just lower in your silver plated items. Now I've laid out a few different pieces here because it, they are all different. You can even see with the tarnish, there's a different tarnish to each of these pieces. Um, some of them have more silver than others. The items that have more silver take longer in the system. So um, keep that in mind. I've noticed that inlaid pieces also are pretty high in nickel content. Um, so that'll be important to pay attention to as we get further along here. Um, and then some of the other items that have very small amount of silver in them actually work kind of the best um, as far as an anode and get consumed pretty quick uh, by the system. So now we'll take a look at what forms on the cathode. So here you can just see our wire. These copper crystals will just start to form all over and depending on how long you leave them in there, they turn into these larger nodules. Um, you know, these have been sitting out for a little while and it could be rinsed off. And actually, if you put these in a little hydrochloric acid, they'll come real shiny. Um, but they'll just continue to grow very large and, and thick. Um, you know, this is probably half a pound right here. That's pretty heavy. So then, and this will end up being 995, typically pure. Um, so it comes out basically just as pure as all the copper you would buy, you know, at the hardware store. The solution that's left then we can reduce down and get our nickel sulfate. So let's get going and I'll show you how I clean out my number two copper cell. Alright, so first we'll take out the aspirator bottle. That is pretty awesome. Wow. Okay, so we'll go ahead and remove this collar and then we'll empty all the contents from this aspirator bottle into a two liter beaker. Look at the crystals in there. That's amazing. Look at that thing. What did I make? <laughs> oh my gosh. My guess is nickel. Those look like nickel big crystals. I'm gonna place the aspirator bottle in a five liter beaker with about a liter of water and get that up to just under boiling and dissolve the majority of the crystals. Next, we'll pour off our solution into this other beaker here. So I just used doubled up coffee filters and we'll go ahead and get this solution filtered. I've tested this copper in the XRF and it's basically three nines fine as long as you rinse it very well. The lowest I've seen it be is nine nine five based on what material you do run in the copper cell. For this experiment, we're cleaning out the number two copper cell. Now in my number two copper cell, I'll run a lot of different material through there 
and you'll end up with quite a bit of nickel and zinc. Nickel and zinc want to run together, so they're going to stay in this solution until we can pull them apart. Once the solution's been completely filtered, I place it back into a 5 liter beaker. I place a platinum anode and a nickel cathode into the solution. I run with a high voltage for around 3 hours and this will drop all the remaining copper out of the solution leaving only nickel and zinc. I've run a couple experiments. I've experimented with bubbling hydrogen gas through the solution, which does work to separate the nickel and zinc. So I'll have some of those experiments in upcoming videos. One thing you find when you reduce this solution down is that the last remaining silver that got caught up in the sulfate will precipitate out first. So continue to reduce down your solution until you see crystals forming on top of the solution let it cool and filter one last time to retrieve any of the remaining silver that got caught up in the sulfate solution. So let's go ahead and melt up our copper. I'm gonna pour a small copper bar for a future experiment that I'm doing, and then the rest of this copper will pour down the lava slide. So there are two ways I know how to refine the silver from this point. One is you can go directly to nitric acid, but what I've found is the nitric acid doesn't completely dissolve all of the silver out of that solution. Quite a bit of it will get hung up, but it does work to recover the majority of your silver. What I've done instead is dissolve the contents of the aspirator bottle after filtering them in aqua regia. This will precipitate out all of your silver and it can be filtered and you end up with fairly pure, if not three nines pure, silver chloride. 